We welcome in the CEO of the USTA, Lou Scher, to the program. Always a pleasure to see you, Lou. I can see you're down in uh, Lake Nona at the USTA National Training Center. And it, it's a good time to be with the USTA as the Americans are absolutely crushing it at the Australian Open. Later tonight, Tommy Paul, first guy to make the semifinals there since Andy Roddick. And come Monday, Lou, we're going to have 10 American men in the top 50 for the first time since 1995. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, you know, it is an incredibly exciting time for uh, American tennis, and it's been a thrilling, thrilling Australian Open. Uh, you know, in terms of what we attributed to, I think it was a decision made over a decade ago, largely headed by our player development organization, to really set ourselves up to be a support to coaches in the private sector, to our sections and their player development organizations, and to be a resource to the entire uh, pathway, if you will, as opposed to trying to identify a small group of, uh, of players and try to pick winners and losers as a, at an early age and, and develop them uh, all the way through. I think providing more support to more players has certainly proven uh, to be a great formula for us. Lou, a lot of success for uh, American players. Also, a lot of confusion, unfortunately, among tennis fans. Where do I find these great players. There were a lot of challenges finding broadcasts of this Australian Open. Given the USTA's mission of growing and promoting tennis, to what extent are you concerned about the media situation? You know, look, our mission, first and foremost, is to inspire uh, anyone that, that might want to pick up a racket to play to have the opportunity to do so. So we're certainly very much in favor of seeing broad distribution and, and these great players in front of uh, as many fans as, as possible. The Australian Open, the biggest challenge is, is more on the time zones and, and the time challenges than, than anything else. A lot of these great matches are happening overnight, but uh, ESPN certainly has been a great home to tennis. Obviously, Tennis Channel is a terrific home to tennis. They've uh, they broadcast Wimbledon. They broadcast the U.S. Open for many years, and uh, we know that, that tennis fans have been able to uh, to watch the uh, the AO and, and certainly watch all the other great Grand Slam tennis over the course of the year. Apart from the blazing success of the American players, also Novak Djokovic is doing Novak Djokovic things. He's on the cusp of his 22nd major, which, of course, would tie Nadal. And yet if the U.S. Open started Monday, he would not be allowed in the country. What can you tell us about Novak Djokovic and your expectations for whether he'll be at the U.S. Open in August? Well, as you said on the opening, right, there's a lot of time between uh, now and then, seven months to uh, to the U.S. Open. Uh, as things stand today, there are no restrictions on entering the field for the U.S. Open. However, the U.S. government does have a restriction on travel into the country if you're uh, unvaccinated. That was the case last year as well. Um, we're monitoring that situation. We certainly would love to see Novak in the field. He's a great champion, arguably uh, the greatest, if not one of the greatest uh, in the sport of all time. We certainly would love to have him uh, participate in our field, but um, that's a bigger uh, debate and discussion with the government than just a, uh, a tennis event. Now, hopefully seven months from now, things could be different, and Novak Djokovic will get to compete in New York. We are here with USDA CEO Lou Scher, and uh, Lou, it's not only pro tennis that is being very successful right now for the Americans, but amateurs. It's been growing in popularity the last three straight years in terms of tennis participation. What is the USDA's plan to keep that going? Yeah, thank you, Steve. We have seen an explosion over the past three years in, in tennis participation. Uh, I've been with the organization for 12 years, and historically, we've been talking about numbers bouncing between 17 and 18 million players. Uh, this past year, we had 23 and a half, 23.6, actually, million players in, uh, in America, 33% growth over the past three years, just extraordinary, extraordinary uh, acceleration in play. And that play is coming from places you would love to think about uh, the growth of our game. 50% growth amongst youth, 60% plus growth amongst Hispanic Latino communities, and 44% growth with uh, Black African American uh, communities. So uh, tennis is truly starting to look more and more like America. I think what we're seeing is a, a change. Certainly COVID got people out and about maybe more than they were before, but we're well past that now. And we're seeing a shift in our country, a focus on health and wellness. And tennis has been identified as the healthiest sport amongst all sort of sports and physical activities from a longevity standpoint. Adds 10 years to your life versus a sedentary lifestyle. Adds five or six more years than any other activity, jogging, swimming, 
um, running, cycling. Uh, it's incredible to think about, but the health benefits of tennis, the longevity benefits of tennis, I think are bringing a lot of new players, both young and old, into our sport. Lou, early February means Davis Cup. We're less than two weeks away from the U.S. team going to Uzbekistan to play. There does seem to be a, a vacancy for the captaincy. Would, would you like to break some news on our air? What, what can you tell us about the captaincy situation? No, we're we're uh, we're very excited. Um, uh, David Nankin uh, will be uh, will be leading our team. Dean Goldfein will be uh, his co-captain. We're very excited about um, about that combination, and uh, we're looking forward. Again, we'll see what happens. Uh, when the AO concludes and, and what that player team looks like. Um, but we're excited to continue on in Davis Cup, and it's an important, important event for our sport. Uh, David Nankin will lead the team uh, as the captain, and Dean Goldfein will help him there in February. Uh, that's fantastic news, Lou. I uh, also want to ask you, listen, you, you've been in this role for about a year now. What, what's the biggest surprise yeah. that you have, you have found so far? You know, look, being a part of this organization for as long as I've had to see the growth and where that growth is coming from, I think, has, has probably trumped anything else. And, and certainly as a sport, we have challenges. Um, but uh, this is an unprecedented period for American tennis. The conversations I find myself in now are conversations associated with how do we account for the increased demand? There aren't enough teaching professionals in America to support the demand for play. There aren't enough courts. Uh, in places to to support the demand for play, the stress on the tennis ecosystem because of all of this new play, shortages of tennis balls, hard to believe, right? We went through over um, the past two years given some of the uh, the supply chain challenges. So it's a new set of conversations, but they're happening for great reasons, which is the sport continues to grow. People are attracted to uh, the longevity aspect of it. And, uh, and we're excited to put more resources to support local communities in growing the game. Well, I, I was excited to find out that I'm going to live 10 years longer now because exactly. I play tennis. Play tennis. That, yeah. that, that's awesome news, Lou. Uh, it's always a, a privilege to spend some time with you. We wish you the best of luck going forward. Enjoy the rest of the Australian Open, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much, guys. And, and let me just say, I know Tennis Channel is, is based out in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Southern California has a huge tennis community. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone. Uh, based out in L.A. this week's tragedy certainly were her horrific, and, and uh, we feel for everybody out there, and, and hopefully we won't have to, to deal with those sorts of issues going forward. Thank you, Lou. Certainly uh, appreciate those kind remarks. Take care.